So today, I'm just going to be showing how to uh, utilize inverse kinematics in the ToonSquid 2.0 update. Uh, I recently drew a stick man and uh, utilized some of the bones and made him do a little flip. But uh, I've been trying to figure out how to do inverse kinematics and I haven't seen any tutorials out there that really detail anything. So I'm going to just be doing a simple one that maybe anyone who watches this can build upon. So to start out, I'm just going to be building a simple demonstration stick man here. So I'm just going to make a little torso. And some simple legs for him. So that will be on one layer there. So if I click the layer icon in the right corner, I can click on his layer now. And now that I have that selected, I'll click the little two lines with two dots on them down right underneath the layer button. And that will pull up this properties tab. From there, underneath this group layer and animation layer, there's a button that says effects. So I can tap that little plus symbol. And that will pull up this effects tab here and right here there's if you realize right above mesh underneath the rigging folder there is an effect called bones so i'll click on that now i can add bones to this layer also just to note i'm drawing this layer with a vector brush and now i have over there on the left corner you can see a little bone with a plus symbol and a little bone with the mouse clicker arrow symbol. I want to make sure I have the bone with the plus symbol and this will allow me to draw bones. So I'm going to simply just draw some bones into my torso here. And just to demonstrate, I'm not going to be using these torso bones today, but just to show if I want to parent bones now to this torso, if I click back on this bottom torso bone and it's highlighted blue, now I can draw bones down and they will be parented to that torso. I have to click it again now. Now it's highlighted blue. And I can draw these little bones right here. And now those are my leg bones and they're parented. Now first, the first step I want to do for this inverse kinematics is I want to tap on the screen and now you can see all of my bones are highlighted yellow. And this is important because, first of all, I'm going to go back. I'm actually going to click on these bones real quick. And uh, I'm just going to name this bottom one here. And if I click on the other bone, I can tap this name portion over there. Throwing up some sloppy names real quick. Okay, just some labeling those just so I know. And now I'm going to go back to what I was originally saying. I'll tap on the screen and all of my bones are highlighted yellow. But you can see there up in the left corner, I still have the bone menu drawing. And now I'm going to draw two little bones right here. So I've drawn out that bone. I'll tap again on the screen so all bones are yellow. And I'll draw another bone right out here. Tap again on the screen. By drawing these bones separately while all bones are highlighted yellow, they will appear separate on my bone hierarchy. They are this B7 and B8, I believe, and they're not attached to any bones. That's important with inverse kinematics. The bone that's going to be your IK target, which is what these bones will serve for. And basically, that's the bone that the other bones uh, kind of obey. I don't exactly fully understand it, but they just must be separate from the rest of your bone hierarchy. They cannot be attached to the other bone layers. So now I'm just going to simply go back and I'm just going to name those. Left, IK, and right, IK. Okay, now that I've done that, that's the first important step done. And now what I can simply do, just hit later there, 
Now I'm going to select the little left uh, bone with the little mouse clicker or the transform bones option as it's officially called. And first of all, I want to make sure now this IK target bone that I have highlighted in blue on the left there. Something important you want to do is you want to turn down the strength to zero. And do the same with the other bone. This is going to basically make sure that these bones have no effect on the other layers. So for instance, if I move it around, you can see that the black stick man, he won't be moving around at all. But if I move this bone, you can see its strength is one up there in the top right. So he has power over the stick man. So now what I'm going to do is simply click on this bottom right leg and when doing inverse kinematics you want to make sure you click the bottom or most end bone in that layer and so in that case it's going to be this bone it wouldn't be this bone because he's still up top and there's still another bone after him so it will be this bone and then i'll simply go over here and click this ik target and right now it says none if i select that that will pull me up into this properties tab and I will simply select my right IK bone and you can see there the leg shifted towards that bone and that's a good sign. So now I'm going to click on my other bone there on the left side, it's that bottom most bone and I'm going to select the left IK bone. Now if I move around this you can see the legs will bend where those bones are at and they kind of move towards them as I move the target around and that's inverse kinematics and I believe that is simply how uh, inverse kinematics can kind of work there also if you just pick this bone you can actually move your leg around just by moving that bone or again you can move your stick man around and it will bend at the joints and the bones there where the IK bones are. Also to be able to do this little bone moving around option, you have to select a bone and you have to make sure this disable or position editing option. So if I click that, now I don't have that option. But if I click enable position editing, now I can move around my whole bone. And as you can imagine, you could do this with arms following the same tutorial, or you could even make more complex figures and have them kind of conform to wherever you have IK bones at. Or you could even puppeteer them and have him move around his stuff with a bone up here without having to actually fully move it around. And I could get him to bend his arm like that without having to individually twist each bone. As if I did, well, I can't do it here, but yeah, something weird like that. Anyway, that is my tutorial for inverse kinematics. Thank you for watching.